It is now my privilege, ladies and gentlemen, to present the chief of Metro Golden Mayer Studios, Mr. Louis B. Mayer. It is a very real pleasure to join with you tonight in welcoming another good news season. I find particular significance in tonight's reunion with you since this also marks the opening of Motion Pictures' greatest year, a season pledged for the achievement of the finest entertainment in the world of dramatic arts for the further fulfillment of the ideals and ambitions for which the screen has strived. Radio and screen are joined together in this common bond of reaching for higher standards in entertainment. Their aims are mutual, their efforts welded toward a greater appreciation of cultural and spiritual influence in entertainment of popular appeal. In the motion picture Boys Town, which Metro Goal Mayor offers as one of its first contributions to this season, we find combined inspirational and entertainment qualities. Boys Town is vastly more than a motion picture story. It is a dramatization of the life of a great humanitarian, his dream of establishing a sanctuary where boys, adrift in the tenderest years of life, might grow to manhood, free of the temptations of the street. Since first founded in Omaha, Nebraska, 21 years ago, Boys Town has sent more than 4,000 good citizens, God-fearing, honest men, out into the world. The realization of the dream of a young Irish priest who believes, as he believes now, that there is no bad boy. Boys Town pictures the lives of all these boys. It is the story of this, of this good priest, the discouragement, heartache, tragedy, he found as he toiled that these friendless, abandoned boys might be saved. From its humble beginning in a ramshackle rooming house, Boys Town has grown through these years into the wonderful institution it is today, a city of little men and a magnificent inspiration to all mankind. We are going to present now some scenes from the picture, and we welcome to our stage those splendid artists Spencer Tracy and Mickey Rooney. <laughs> Boys Town is a true story of Father Flanagan's career. It begins in a Middle Western city where Father Flanagan is a young priest. He is already interested in the crime problem and down and outers of all kinds, but he hasn't yet got his big idea. Tonight he is to visit Dan Farrow, a convicted murderer, in his death house cell. It is Dan's last night on earth. And while he's waiting for Father Flanagan, he sends out word that he wants to confess his crime. The warden enters the cell. Well, my lad. They tell me you want to confess. Yeah. Well, that'll help the jury. They convicted you on circumstantial evidence. You understand? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Public opinion, too. Clear that up. Justice itself will feel easier. I'm doing it because I'm scared. May help the big rap when I go through that last door. You might as well do a real job. I've got a couple of newspaper men and the judge who sentenced you. Oh, can't you stop that singing? It's... His turn next. You confess, he sings. Okay. Bring on your gang. Good. Anything I can do for you, Dan? How about a drink? Okay. Here you are. Oh, thanks. Well, go ahead and drink it. No, I... I think I won't. Well, I'll be... Good boy, Dan. Oh, Father Flanagan. You want to see him? Oh, sure. I asked for him. He knew me when. Okay. Good evening, Father Flanagan. Good evening, Warden. Hello, Dan. Hello, Father. I'll leave you two alone together for a minute while I get the others. Oh, uh, Dan has decided to talk, Father. Oh. Well, Father, how long have I got? Eternity starts in 45 minutes, Dan. What happens when that door bangs shut behind you? A bad minute or two? Oh, yeah, I know after that. Oh, Dan, that's been a secret for a million years. You can't expect to crack that in a few minutes. Father, would you be afraid to die? No. Why not if you know what happens? Well, Dan, I've made mistakes, but I've been sorry for them. I've tried to make up for them. If you killed a rat and it was coming to him, could you find some way of being sorry for that? Dan, life and death should be left to the creator of life and death. Here comes the warden again. 
You've got the judge and the reporters. Oh, please stay. Will you, Father? Sure, Dan, I'll stay. Hiya, Judge. Hello, Dan. Well, Judge, the young man wants to admit his debt to the state. What's that? My debt to the state? Uh, if he'd done this sooner, the debt wouldn't be so big. Is that what this is all about? You're going to take my life because I owe the state something, eh? When I was a kid, 12 years old, my mother died. Did I go on the cuff to the state for the gutters I slept in? Is that it? Uh, that's just sniveling. The state reached its arms out. Three years. In the reformatory. <laughs> when I went in, cupping a loaf of bread was a job. When I came out, I could rob a bank. Listen, big shot. I'm going out that way in a few minutes, so you're getting the lowdown. Where was the state when a lonesome, starving kid cried himself to sleep in a flop house with a lot of drunks, hobos, and tramps? Is that when this death started? The only pals I had a chance at were kids in the alley. And I had to be taught to string along. Just before we got out of the state's arms, the reformatory, we made up a gang. Six of us. Old pals. We bet our lives across the board and let it ride. Oh, sure. Your mouths pop open for that one. That's Greek to you wise guys, ain't it? I went up and turned rat for state's evidence and I killed him. But get this. If I'd had one friend, just one friend when I was 12, I wouldn't be standing here like this. Now go on. Get out of here. You're a lot of my friends, Sam. Get out. Get out. Listen, Father. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry. <laughs> This experience gives Father Flanagan his revolutionary idea. From a modest beginning with half a dozen homeless waifs, Boys Town grew in three years to a small community of 200 boys. 200 boys well on their way to becoming good citizens. Now at the request of Joe Marsh, a gangster in prison, Father Flanagan calls on the gangster's younger brother, Whitey Marsh, played by Mickey Rooney. Joe wants his brother to go straight and has begged Father Flanagan to take Whitey to Boys Town. Father Flanagan finds him playing cards with some other boys in a tenement room. I'll call that and raise a quarter. I'll raise that a half a buck. Half a buck? Oh, that's over the limit. Yeah, cut it out, Whitey. Hello, boys. Hello, Father Flanagan. Hello, Father. Hiya, Doc. Which one of you is Whitey Marsh? I've got a message for Whitey. I'd like to talk to him alone. <laughs> So long, Whitey. I, I got a bow. Yeah, yeah. See you later, Whitey. Hey, guys, where you going? I'm out about a buck ten. Uh-huh. Well, we'll see you later. Don't worry. Get your bow. Sure, right, kid. So you're Whitey, huh? Well, maybe I am and maybe I ain't. What's it to you? Well, now let's start by putting out that cigarette. Hey. And get your feet down off that table. Well, for the lover. Uh, now that's better. Whitey, I saw your brother Joe just a little while ago. Yeah. We had a long talk about you, Whitey. Joe wants you to come with me to Boys Town. You got a swell chance taking me to that joint. That's right, a swell chance. I've got two hundred and eighty dollars that your brother's given me to take care of you. I don't care if he gave you a million bucks. What am I going to do in a broken down nursery like Boys Town? Oh, there are a lot of things you could do. We've got machine shops, carpenter shops, mm. printing presses, mm. farming. You know, I think you might like farming. Good for you. Keep you out in the open. Put some hair on your chest. You think you're going to make a plow jockey out of me? You've got another thing coming. Now, look, Whitey. In a pinch, I can be tougher than you are, and I guess maybe this is the pinch. Now, you're going with me to Boys Town because that's the way your brother wants it, and that's the way I want it. Okay, Doc. But I'll tell you right now, don't expect me to stay there very long. (laughs) 